God wants to provide for you, but it's not always going to be dollars and cents. Wealth is the wealthy place. It, it talks about your marriage, your relationships with people, uh, your business relationships, uh, whatever we talk about, but it begins with your relationship with God. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back. This is Alan Bagg, and we're on Wisdom for Life. And this week, we're having a great time studying the Word around God's principles. Living in the Optimum Zone, that is a book written by Didier Tisson, and I have him with me today, a great friend of mine, and so good to be able to gather around the Word amongst friends. Amen. Welcome back, Didier. Thank you, Dr. Alan. It's great to be here. It's, it's great to be with you. Great to know that the Word of God is true and yes and amen. Yes, it is. Yeah. And it's exciting. Now, yesterday we, we rounded up around Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. It says, You shall remember the Lord your God. It is He who gives you power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant, which He swore to your fathers as it is this day. And we, we're talking about the provision of God mm -hmm. and how sometimes people become so focused on provision that's almost their driving factor and I've said it before when we talk around prosperity uh, when you study the Word of God you will find that prosperity is a factor of the God of God's kingdom and yet for some reason it's developed a uh, almost like a negative approach sometimes when people talk about the prosperity message and I find that it's because it's misunderstood Yes. God wants to provide for you, but it's not always going to be dollars and cents. If you need rands or whatever your currency is where you're watching this, uh, we know that life every day, for me to live life, I need to have money. Mm. But money shouldn't be my driving factor. It's not about the bigger house and the bigger car. Because here it says that God gives you power. Now, if He says He gives you power, that means He's the one enabling it. That's the anointing, the gifts, the talents, everything you have to get wealth. And he didn't say he gives you wealth. He says that we go and get it. But when we hear wealth, we mustn't always hear money. Wealth is the wealthy place. And we spoke about it yesterday where it, it talks about your marriage, your relationships with people, uh, your business relationships, uh, whatever we talk about. But it begins with your relationship with God. Because notice it says that he may establish his covenant. Yes. If he's going to establish his covenant, what are we talking about when we say the covenant of God? Dr. Allen, when, um, when you read that scripture, God says he gives us the power yes. to get wealth. Now, if God's got the power, we need to be able to tap into that power. Exactly. So, there's certain rules, there's certain laws, there's certain um, principles that we need to apply to tap into that power. Mm -hmm. Now God gives us these principles in His Word, which are actually very simple. They are very um, easy to apply. Yes. But you know, uh, we as many times um, when God talks about, for example, the tithe, Mm -hmm. which represents 10% of our total income. Right. You know, people think, well, that's a lot of money that I need to give to the kingdom of God. Well, you know, that's one of the principles we need to apply to tap into the power. Exactly. If we talk about finances. Yes. It's not about a legal obligation. And that's sometimes where people miss it. That's right. It's under the law and it's Old Testament. It's a principle. It's a principle. It's the same way gravity wasn't done away when Jesus died for us. That's right. <laughs> Gravity still works. That's right. Principles of the kingdom still work. That's right. The obligation to the law for salvation has been removed. That's right. But the principle still remains. It that? still remains. Yes. And we need to apply the principle to activate the benefit. Yes. 
So if we want to have the benefits of the kingdom of God in regards to our finances, mm -hmm. we need to apply the principle. Right. And one of the principles in regards to our financial position in God is to be a tither. Okay. Yes. And, you know, many people refer to the tithe as, well, it was under the law. Well, Abram tithed before the law was given. That's right. It's always been a principle that God has put into motion mm -hmm. from creation. Yes. And it's something that God says, the tithe doesn't belong to you, it belongs to me. I need you. You're a covenant person if you're a child of mine. And the tithe belongs to me. Just bring it back to me. Right. And if you bring it back to me, you activate the principle. Mm -hmm. You tap into the power yes. that yes. you need to prosper. Right. So that's the first principle. Mm -hmm. We need to be tithers. If we look at farmers today, you know, to own a few bags of seed or even a whole storehouse uh -huh. full of seeds does not make you a farmer. Right. A farmer is called a farmer because he owns he's a got farm. Land. He's got soil. <laughs> he's got soil. Right. Now the Word of God teaches us very clearly that uh, in Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else because out of our hearts flows the issues of life. Yes. Our heart is the soil. Mm -hmm. Our heart is where the Word of God gets imparted, the That's promises right. of God God gets established, mm -hmm. the principles of God gets rooted yes. and grow. And so our heart is very much like the soil that a farmer has. Well, Jesus confirmed that in Mark chapter 4. That's right. We spoke about the seed principle and the different types of soil. The four different types of he soil. He was referring to the heart of man. That's right. Mm -hmm. So a farmer understands very clearly that he needs a title deed. He needs to own a farm yes. to be able to be called a farmer, firstly. That's right. And to say that I've got some property or I've got some space to sow my seed in. Mm -hmm. He needs soil. Correct. So the moment a farmer owns a title deed, he's a farmer. That's he right. He owns a title deed yes. for a farm. Mm. The moment a tither, a Christian, becomes a tither, he owns a title deed. Oh, come on. He's got we property go. yes. to farm on, a spiritual right. property. And that property is big enough to pay for the purpose of God in your life, mm. to pay for all the needs you have to fulfill that purpose and abundantly bless you more than you need. Mm -hmm. Because when you're a tither, you are actually telling God, God, I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you on this earth with my life. I'm yes. trusting you on this earth with your purpose for my life and that you will provide for that purpose. But isn't that really what it boils down to? That's what it is. It's, it's the trust factor. You know, when you, when you look at the Bible tells us in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Yes. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Listen to what he's saying there, that God's greatest desire is to be believed. Because mm -hmm. coming to God, believe that he is, believe that he is a rewarder, that was referred to as faith. And without that, it's impossible to please God. Yes. So God, <laughs> you can put it this way, belief activates God. It, it, it gets him excited. It's what turns him on. He, he is God. He always is God. His power is always available. Uh, it's like I've said before, God is omnipresent. That means he's on the moon right now. His power is all over. He's omnipotent. That's right. But it's not needed on the moon right now. No one's placing a demand on it. Yes. So we don't see power manifesting everywhere. Yes. We have to draw on it. And the way to access it is through belief. And then acting on that belief, even Abraham, when God introduced who he was, what made God choose Abraham out of all the people on the planet? And the Bible says he believed and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Jesus hadn't yet died for righteousness, yet he gave it to Abraham on credit simply because he believed. Yes. And that's the key here is that it's, it's not about an obligation to the law because that obligation has been removed by mm -hmm. Jesus' blood. Mm -hmm. It's not about trying to please the Godfather. I must pay him off so he doesn't destroy me. If I don't, I'll be cursed. It's 
not about it. You're yeah. blessed because you're born again. You're blessed. Mm -hmm. But there are factors that if they weren't there, everybody would be blessed. Well, we are all blessed, but everybody would see the manifestation of yes. it. Everybody would have no needs. Yes. But until you turn the tap on, the power's there. Mm -hmm. The potential's there. But you have to tap into it to that's see it right. flow. And the beginning of that is the time. And that's saying to God, I trust you. I don't need this for me. Yes. I'm putting my hands, my life in your hands. That's right. And that's the active demonstration of it. Yes, and nothing can please God more than faith in action. That's right. When God sees that you trust Him, mm -hmm. that moves the hand of God. Yes. Because that brings a connection, a flow, to the, for, uh, in regards to the blessings of God. That's right. In regards to how God wants to position you in life mm -hmm. and then empower you yes. to fulfill that purpose that He's placed you on this earth for. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's um, covenant on mm -hmm. this side. We are covenant people. That's it. It's faith on that side. Yes. But we need to connect the two. And the two that gets, that, uh, the two... To connect the two, mm -hmm. we need obedience. Now you're talking. It's like our credit card. Yes. I can have a bank account full of money. Yes. I can have my card in my pocket. But if I don't have the password, I cannot draw from the supply. Huh. So I need the obedience to draw the money, my password, from my bank account, out of from my card, from my bank account with the password, with my card at the ATM to draw on the supply. That's good. So obedience yes. is the password. Very obedience good. is That's the connection between faith and covenant. Mm -hmm. If I don't obey, if I don't put my faith in action, I will not draw on the supply. Wow. So it starts with tithing. Be obedient with your tithe. And that obedience literally opens heaven. It See, opens the windows of heaven. That's what the word says. But sometimes we can read that just, well, the windows of heaven are open. People say, well, aren't the windows open already? No, what that's saying is, when you step into that place of obedience, God's literally saying, you have access to all I have. Yes. That's what it's saying. That everything is available to that's all. Right. It's available. The potential's there. That's right. But when through your obedience, the whole thing opens. Activates. Yes. And God's literally saying, whatever, what, what is it you need? You are tapping into the power. Yes. And, and that's how the tithe positions us. Hmm. And that's how a title deed positions a farmer to be a farmer. Very good. And God, He compares us with farmers. Right. So when we read again 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 and 11, God gives seed to the farmer. Who are we? We are farmers. Mm -hmm. and food to those who need to eat. God will also give you seed and multiply. Right. He doesn't give seed um, to, to people, non to a non-farmer. <laughs> <laughs> you can only do something with seed if you're a farmer, That's if you right. own property. Mm -hmm. So if we want to really prosper and if we want to advance financially, we first need to ap apply the first principle. And that means we need to become tithers so that we can own a title deed. That Very title good. deed positions you yes. to be able to uh, plant, work your soil, plant your seed, mm -hmm. and then harvest your yields that will pay for God's purpose in your life. Yeah. But it starts with the title deed. We need to be in covenant with God financially. Right. And that title deed is what gives you confidence. Right. You know, if you think of a title deed, let's say, even if you think of property, if, if you're living somewhere, either you own the property you live in, which is the title deed, or you're renting from someone. Now, I've done both, and there's a difference. You know, if somebody knocks on the door and says uh, they, they got some little tatty ID, whatever, uh, the owner, if I'm renting, the owner said, uh, I must come inside and fix something in the kitchen. Yes. I'm going to, no, he didn't tell me about it. No, the owner says, I must, and I must do it today. If I don't come today, it's going to charge, charge him double or whatever. So he sent me out. I have to come in right now. Now, I'm umming and eyeing. Oh, hang on now. I need to get hold of the owner first. Mm -hmm. I phone him and can't get hold of his number. 
and uh, this guy says, "Well, listen, if you just let me, I can finish." You, you, you're in a very, you're in a compromised position. Yes. But when you're the title leader, when you're the owner, someone knocks on, "I was come fix something in the kitchen." Beg your pardon. Mm -hmm. Who sent you? Well, the owner said, "I'm the owner, and I didn't call you. You don't belong. That's you're right. not invited. Get out." That's right. And that ownership gives you the authority. That's right. To if you see an attack coming, yes, to stop it. That's right. There's a boldness. There's a far greater boldness. So when you see somebody, the enemy, Satan, messing around in your field, yes, and he's trying to destroy your crops and hurt you yes. and if you're not in the place of title deed ownership yes. you're kind of wondering should I shouldn't I no go away out no. but when you're the owner and you see something happening in your field that doesn't that you know you didn't call for mm -hmm. you have the right to put your foot down and say no yes. I'm the owner of this field get out of my field in the name of Jesus and God in his promise will back you up that's right. I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. That's right. You only have that kind of confidence yes. in your authority when you are the title the owner. And that's what tithing does. Yes. It places you in that financial covenant. You have authority over your finances because you are in covenant with God and you can execute that authority with full confidence. Yes. And God will back you up 100%. Oh, yeah. Out of heaven. The whole of heaven standing behind you. See, now all the other laws begin to fall into place. That's right. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Yes. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And that's, you know, again, that's a scripture that people must understand. That's not about taking a demon and tying him in a chain and putting him aside somewhere. Because if we all did that, all Christians doing that all the time, we'd run out of demons eventually. <laughs> you know, it's, not, it's yes. like someone says, well, then if you bound him, who let him go? Yes. No, it's talking about legality. Yes. What you bind, what you declare illegal That's right. on earth, heaven will back that statement yes. up. Yes. If you declare something legal, heaven will back it up. It works both ways. Mm -hmm. So if someone keeps saying, I'm always sick, I'm always sick, heaven can't do anything to stop it because you are declaring that sickness legal in your life. Yes. You have to stand against that. So mm -hmm. no, I refuse that sickness. Mm -hmm. I bind that sickness that's saying, I declare it illegal in my life. Yes. And heaven says, I'll back that up. Yes. Heaven says, we will make sure that that is carried through. Yes. And so when you've got that title in place, you have that authority to declare what should be and should not be in your life. And God says, again, all of heaven will back you up. That means there are angels working on your behalf in your field. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you know, the, the, the tithe belongs to God anyway. Yes. You know, we don't bring, we don't, we don't give God anything when we pay our tithe. Mm -hmm. We just give, we just bring back to God what belongs to Him anyway. That's right. So we pay our tithes. We don't give our that tithes. That is good. Yes. If a farmer doesn't pay his, uh, if a citizen of South Africa doesn't pay his taxes, mm -hmm. he will get penalized for that. Right. And he will pay penalties. For that and he'll you he will, he will have a ne negative effect on his life mm. if he's not paying his taxes That's for it's sure. unlawful <laughs> yes. not to pay your taxes exactly it's unlawful not to pay your tithe yeah. in the kingdom of god that is good so we cannot draw from the benefit if we don't pay our tithes so the benefits of god's kingdom in regards to our finances mm -hmm. and a farmer understands that he needs to pay for his farm that's right. He needs to own the title deed. And he needs to continue to pay all levies on that farm. Yes. And he That's needs to truth. make sure that he stays in covenant. Amen. He mustn't, he, he can't pay f only this year and nothing next year. If he stops paying his bond, or if he stops paying his rates and taxes, or if he stops paying fees on what he needs to pay in regards to um, expenses towards the government, he he loses authority That's on right. that farm. Yeah. So we need to stay obedient. Stay obedient. Stay consistent. Amen. Even though some things don't look good, you know, it doesn't work out as it should, and we are going through storms in life, life happens. Sure. Stay obedient. Stay, obedient. stay consistent. That is good. Leviticus 27, verse 30. 
says, and all the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land, the fruit of the tree is the Lord's, it is holy to the Lord. Yes. It's holy. That means it's set apart. Yes. And God has established that. And when I recognize that and I choose to obey that, I'll see the benefits of it. So I really want to encourage you, make a decision. Today, if you haven't yet done it before, just make a decision from this day on. I choose to honor God in His time. And when I do, the windows of heaven are open and the whole of heaven is available and will back me up in all that I do. I'm a farmer, I can sow seed, and that seed will multiply. Let's look at this and I'll see you when we get back. Alan Bag Ministries presents Come Celebrate 2018, taking place from the 2nd till the 6th of April at the Bay Christian Family Church. Come and celebrate with us here at the Bay Christian Family Church as we draw near to our God and see Him manifest the miraculous in our lives. Come Celebrate will be taking place from Monday the 2nd of April and will continue with both morning and evening sessions until the 6th of April. With anointed guest speakers and artists, we are in for great times in the presence of God and some powerful faith-building times in God's will. If you would like details regarding Come Celebrate, please make use of any of our contact details. Jerry Edison has seen God's blessing in his business and his endeavors in the marketplace for many years. His great success in business have come through applying God's powerful principles practically in the marketplace. God has already made the way for us all to prosper, to be blessed and to be a blessing unto us. Through his book, Living Life in the Optimum Zone, Didier Tassan will help you to understand God's covenant and what it means to you as a child of God. We will understand in living life in the optimum zone how much God wants us to prosper. He will help teach you the powerful principles that he has lived his life by in order to experience living life in the optimum zone. And this book will help you to position yourself in life to prosper. So discover how to step into living life in the optimum zone. Purchase this life-changing book by contacting us here at Allen Bag Ministries. God's kingdom is built on principles. That's what we've been talking about. And very often it's through ignorance of the principles that we end up getting hurt. We love God. We want to serve Him. We worship Him. We pray. We follow after Him. And we do the best we can. But usually it's because of things I'm not aware of that I'll end up getting hurt. And that's where this book is so vitally important. If you can get a hold of the principles, and it's all laid out here with Scripture, life examples, studying, and you can discover the principles of God's kingdom that will take you from just barely getting by into a place of where you're living life in the optimum zone. And that optimum zone is where God's principles all connect and you get the best result possible. And God's desire is for you to experience that. And so I know that many of us here have been facing various problems and situations and you know, life can throw some tough things at us. But we serve an awesome God that answers prayers. And so Didier, if you'd be so kind, would you please pray with us yes. and all of us that are out there watching. You may be seated at home uh, this morning and thinking, well, Didi, you don't know my challenges. Yes, you're right. I don't know your challenges, but God knows your challenges. And God is able, well able, to turn everything around for you this morning. His promises are yes and amen. And although it's a tough time you are maybe going through today, God can change that situation around and you will see the goodness of God That's in your life right. this morning. Sure. I really trust God to change your situation around this morning mm -hmm. and to bring glory to His name in your life. Let's pray and ask God to touch you where you are and to inspire you with His goodness and with His life and with His promises over your life this yes. morning. Dear Heavenly Father, yes. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your promises. Mm. I thank you, Father God, where your people are seated in their homes this morning. And in particular, I'm talking to someone who's really being challenged um, in a situation where you are 
at the brink of losing everything. Your house, your cars, your family is being challenged. Relationships in your family is being challenged. Just because of the negative situation you've been going through for months and months and it doesn't and it hasn't come to an end. Things hasn't turned around. I'm speaking life into that yes, situation yes. this morning. I, I see God coming into uh, this situation and turning it around. And the Thank next you. few days, you will see things turning around and you will have favor and abundant favor coming into your house. Yes. God is changing things for you. Praise. Oh, Father God, I'm praying for this person. I ask you to bless this person. I'm asking you, Father God, to fill uh, this person's heart. Oh, Father God with faith and that all discouragement mm. will just melt away yes. and things will change. I pray, Father God, that all people seated in their homes or at work or wherever you find yourself this morning, that God's blessing will be poured out on you, that you will experience it in a supernatural way yes. and you'll be blessed over and above what you expect. Yes. In Jesus' name, I pray this. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Now, we know God honors his word and he answers prayers we want to hear about it there's the address on the screen please write to us let us know this is what happened this is what was wrong in my life and i received the prayer today and this is what changed and we'd love to hear about that because it's exciting to know that our god is a god that hears prayers and answers prayers amen your life will never be the same again Video, once again, thank you so much for being with us. We're going to get together again tomorrow. Make sure you don't miss it. We're going to carry on having a look at these awesome principles from God's Word. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. Alan Bag Ministries is making this week of programs available for purchase. This week's Wisdom for Life programs are available in digital format, so purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us at any of our details.